Hey everybody, this is Elise Tager and we are in module five of Solo to CEO. This is one of my favorite topics, which is the topic of money. And the reason for that is that for most of the entrepreneurs and the solopreneurs that I have worked, over, worked with over the course of the many, many years I've been working with them, money is an issue for everybody and money is an issue at whatever stage of business you are. So I want to dig into this very juicy topic and let's start thinking about where it's impacting our business and the ability to grow. So just as a recap, this is what we're going to go over in the next module. Money, you think you don't have enough. Does money work for you or do you work for money? Do you see present expenditures as a value add or an investment for your future business or are they just expenses? and they're costing you something. Do you spend money with purpose? So we're gonna talk about the seven money blocks that are keeping you from growing and how to eliminate them. Again, I always start with mindset because it is the key to, to reaching success later on. You've gotta get your arms around where your own, your own mindset issues are keeping you stuck. So that's where we're gonna start there. These are big ones. How to start changing, charging what you're worth. How to get comfortable with sales and sources of money, it is out there. So, does money work for you or do you work for money? Um, money, I am sure you've heard this before, money is just energy and it uh, it's, comes in, it comes and it goes. And you need to be very aware that you need to be intentional about how you're gonna use the money slash energy that comes into your world intentionally so that you're not at the effect of it. Do you see present expenditures as a value add for your business, as an expense for your business, or are they an investment? Let me tell you, when this switch flipped for me, this was huge. So I can't remember how many years ago I hired a business coach to help me get myself out of a really deep hole. And the first thing I thought of was, oh my God, I can't afford this. And I did it anyway. Ready to jump off a bridge, I did it anyway. And within the first week or two, I could see that this was gonna be my step out of the hole that I had dug for myself. And it was the best way to get me growing and on solid ground and towards a future. And it was an investment. It wasn't an expense. And I tell you, I have a thought of all the expenses of my business as investments ever since then. It was a major mindset shift. So think about that, how you hold that for yourself. Do you see present expenditures as investments or as expenses? Do you spend money with purpose every time you whip out that credit card? Are you intentional about where you're spending your money? How many times have you signed up for an online course because it sounded great and it sounded like just what you needed at this point in your career or in your life and you bought it, you downloaded it and you never looked at it again? I have been guilty of that. Think about spending money with purpose. And then what's your money mindset? We're gonna spend quite a bit of time on that. So it might seem obvious but you wanna set your business intention. And I think I talked about this in the very first module on mindset. You need to decide that you're gonna be successful and that your business is gonna succeed. And your intention is to have that business succeed no matter what. You decide where you wanna go, but keep in mind, you're the, decide, you're the one who's deciding. It's not the slings and arrows of the universe. It's not whatever the universe throws up in front of you. It's not at the effect of anything other than your own intention. So before we go any farther, check yourself. What is the intention that you have for your business? And again, you answer this for yourself, but I want you to start there so that your intention is to be successful and positive and you will be growing. So let's talk about some of the major mindset shifts that come up and just talk about expenses versus investment. Think about where you want to invest your money, right? There are, every time you pay something, 
it was a decision that you made. And there's certain things like um, your domain name or where you're housing your website or where your email um, list is housed. There are certain operational expenses that are a given. However, you made a decision about each one of those in the beginning. You decided where you wanted, which email platform you wanted to use. You, wanted, you decided where you wanted your email, your domain to be. You made decisions and these were investments in your business. As you move forward, what happens is the decisions get more expensive. However, the investments are bigger. So in your mind, think about where you want to invest your money to be the best business you possibly can and to grow your business. Don't let money keep you in a vise. This is one of the ones that we're going to talk about a lot because if you decide that you can't afford or you can't spend or I can't move forward because I don't have the cash with something that you might be really, really benefited by, this is keeping you in a vise. And again, you want to be thoughtful and intentional about where you are not spending money and really examine whether or not that's the best decision. If scarcity rules your decisions, you will not grow. Typically what I've seen with working with entrepreneurs over the years is if there is a scarcity mindset, if they are reticent to spend money, what's really happening there is they're afraid there isn't going to be more business coming in. They don't know where they're going to get the next client. Their expenses are exceeding their income. They don't believe in themselves. They don't have faith in their ability to do business. So if you're coming from a position of scarcity, you want to dig deeper. What is that really all about? Typically, it's a lack of, lack of confidence and a lack of understanding that there is always more business out there. You will be bringing in more business. Scarcity is when you're stuck and they fear that you'll never sell another program again. You'll never get another client again. Dig deeper to look at that one. Money blocks. I can't afford it. How many times have you said to yourself or to a, a friend or another entrepreneur or to whatever, I can't afford it? period. How many times have you said it to your kids? So that phrase, I can't afford it, is very limiting. The phrase should be, how can I afford it? So if this is something that you have decided would benefit you or benefit your business or you really want to have or do or be to move forward and you say, I can't afford it, there's something else going on there. If it's something that you do want, the question should be, how can I afford it? And you spend that energy not wringing your hands, but looking for ways that you can create money to be able to afford whatever that thing is. Another thing that was, again, a big shift for me is the, money, the mindset that debt is unacceptable. Um, if you're in business, there's always going to be a certain amount of debt. Debt, again, energy in versus energy out. Debt is a leverage system that allows you to grow more with a little bit more income. So if you are from the position that debt is unacceptable, you're never going to be taken, able to take advantage of that lever leverage. And if we continue working together, we, if this is an issue for you, we would explore why is debt unacceptable? How much debt is unacceptable? What, what feels like too much to you? And that rolls right next to the, to the next one, which is penny pinching. If you are so frugal that you're strangling yourself, you are never going to get where you want to and deserve to go. So think about the difference between being frugal and being a penny pincher. You want to be strategic about where you invest your money. If you're always looking for the cheapest deal, you're never going to grow. So if you tell yourself, I've never been good with money, you know what? You're not going to be good with money. So this is another one of those very unconscious decisions that was made somewhere way in your past. And you probably had incidences where you weren't good with money that taught you on a very unconscious basis that you're not, quote, not good with money. But 
Stuff from your past like that should stay in your past. And it doesn't mean that you can't be good with money today or tomorrow or into the future. But if you start continue to buy into that self-defining phrase, you're going to continue to not be good with money. Another money block, I hate budgets. Oh my gosh, are you in business or not? If you hate the structure of a budget, you're going to have a hard time looking at your P&L. You're going to have a hard time looking at your profit versus your expenses. You're going to have a very hard time putting together and acknowledging what your expenses are. This is a tool that helps you be your best self. If you see budgeting as a constraint, then the budget wasn't defined with you in, mind, you in mind. And again, if we were to work together, this is something that would help you work through, which is what would a budget, what would a just for you budget look like? So it wouldn't feel like you're wearing um, a straight jacket. Another money mindset issue. I'll never be a six figure earner. I'll never be a seven figure earner. I'll never earn as much as fill in the blank. All of those nevers, are again, go back to self-doubt and inability to see yourself in a future that is successful. And the more you tell yourself that story, the more you're going to buy into it. So this is one of those money, those mindset issues that I would work very hard if I were you to scratch off or rephrase. I wonder how long it will take to become a six-figure earner. I know that within a year, I will be a six-figure earner. I have every capability of earning six figures. However you want to rephrase that, this is the mantra you want to have in your mind, not the I'll never. Because again, you've heard this before. If your subconscious hears that, you'll play it out in reality. So you want to eliminate that phrase. Here's another one that um, takes some working with, which is my market won't pay premium prices. Um, and you get to decide what premium prices is. When we project our money fears onto our customers, we decide what they can and they cannot afford. And it's none of our business, right? You have no business doing that. You have no idea what your prospect's capabilities are. You have no idea what feels like a lot of money to them or not. It's none of your business. So what you need to do is to create services or packages or programs that have value that you believe in and you believe in the price that you're putting them out for. Whether your target audience can afford that or not is none of your business, right? You have faith in what you're doing. If you feel like they can't afford it, take a look back at how much you value yourself and whether you feel your offer has the value that you feel it should. So a couple other mindset issues that you want to be thinking about. Forgiving your financial past. This is subtle. We have all made mistakes in our financial past. I have flirted with bankruptcy twice and didn't have to go there, but I was right on the edge. And it was through some really stupid money management stuff. It was through a second time. It was through poor management of my business. And it took me a long time, each one of those times, to get myself into a forward moving motion. The longer you wallow in the past, the longer it's going to become your future. So even if you've had tremendous problems in your finances in the past, you need to keep it in your past. Have you learned from it? That was before, this is now. Don't get stuck there. The best thing I can say to you is when you are able to, take a look at what the reality was. What, how could you have done things differently? Again, without the blame, how could you have done things differently? How could have things turned out differently if you had done those differently? What have you learned from that experience? the more energy you can put into learning from that mistake or learning from that episode to put towards your future, the better off you'll be. So if you wallow in the past, even if it was a gigantic failure financially, 
learn from it, pick yourself up off the floor, and give yourself permission to move forward. I tell you this having been there big time. So learn what you can and move forward as quickly as you can to make it a positive experience. Embrace your worth. Oh my gosh, is this a big one. So most of the women, women that I work with underprice their offers. It's a given. Why do we do that? I don't know why we do that, but we do. Um, I could go on forever on why we, we're the, we're the nurturer, we are in a serving role more often than not. I don't know what, what it is in our makeup, but most of us undercharge for what we're offering. We undervalue our offers, our, what we're putting out there. You need to take a good look at the expertise that you bring to the table and embrace that you are the expert that you are and you are worth the money that you are charging. Value your time. Make sure your prices are a reflection of both your time and your value, right? And if you're still charging by the hour as opposed to charging for a result, let's talk about that in our group coaching calls. So, you know, if you want to pick, a, pick a, an amount of time, uh, money that you charge per hour, pick something huge. Say you want to earn $100,000 a year. What does that look like on an hourly basis? and then triple it and say to yourself, this is the cost, this is the value of an hour of my time. And make sure that your prices reflect the amount of expertise and the time that you are putting into the product or the offering that you're putting out there. This, this, is, this is a big one because I think so many of us have a hard time giving ourselves permission to be an expert giving herself permission to be of value and holding that value high enough. So more on this topic, don't be afraid to say no. Not every person that wants to work with you is worthy of you working with. So you might have discovery calls where someone says, I'd like to work with you, but when you sell them, tell them your prices, they start running away. That's not your client. So, don't, if you're still at the stage where you're taking anything on for the sake of cash flow, let's talk about that on a group coaching call. Don't be afraid to say no to business if it doesn't reinforce the trajectory you're on, if it doesn't reinforce your own worth and your own value. Don't be negotiated down if you feel what you're offering is the right value. So don't be afraid to say no. It's a very enlightening experience. Don't let people take advantage of you also. So I don't know if you've ever been in a position where, um, oh, I don't know, someone was trying to get a better price or someone came in and said, you know, I took your group, I took your, your program and I, I didn't think I got the value out of it. And you know full well that the program was a value. They just didn't do the work. You need to be strong enough to be able to say, you know, let's talk about where this wasn't a value to you could you have done things differently? You know, show me your work so I can see that you actually did the work before I give you any kind of a refund. There are so many ways that you need to stand up for what you are putting out there as opposed to just someone coming in and stepping all over you. So be careful there. Think big. Do you remember when you were in elementary school? and you had an allowance of $5 or $2 or whatever it was, and you got a birthday gift of a $50 check, oh my God, that was a huge amount of money. Huge. Think now in your business. What's a lot of money or too much money to you right now, right? Would signing up for a mastermind that costs you $10,000 for six months be too much? You're, you're, only you are going to know the answers to this, but I'm here to tell you that as you grow as an entrepreneur, as your business grows, what's going to feel like a lot of money or too much money is going to grow with you. So you need to allow yourself that expansion so that 
$10,000 this year for a mastermind course is going to sound like peanuts next year when you've tripled your income. And again, that's a lack of belief in your ability to grow and charge and get the revenue that you want. It's a lack of self-confidence. So I guess my challenge would you to be anytime, anytime some mindset issue comes up where your first response is, that's a lot of money or that's too much money. Take a step back and think about why do I feel that's too much money? What does too much money mean? Just challenge it for yourself. What's the upside going to be? If you invest in this thing, what's the potential revenue payoff going to be? And is that investment amount going to seem like very little in comparison? So think bigger than you're thinking now or challenge yourself to think bigger every time you come up a wall like that that says that's too much money. So let's talk about sales for a minute. This is another side of money. Um, so many of the women I work with have put all of their attention into creating incredible content, wonderful programs. They are great coaches, really great coaches. They are great um, health, they provide great services, right? They build wonderful websites or they are um, chiropractors that are fantastic. The what of what they do, they are fabulous with. But they say to me apologetically, I'm terrible at sales. I hate sales. I just hate doing sales. I don't do it well. I just, I avoid it at all cost. So the flip side of money mindset issues is another one, which is get comfortable with being in the sales function because that is part and parcel of what's going to make you grow as an entrepreneur. So one of the things that I, I want you to put this in a different frame framework. If you have belief and what you're doing in your program and your services and what have you, what you're doing with the sales process is you're offering an invitation for someone to come join you. You're not ramming it down their throats. You're not going to sit there like that typical used car salesman who I've never met before, but people talk about and try to get you to buy. You're offering an invitation. You're putting your offer, your program, your product in front of people, very clearly stating the price and inviting them, giving them the opportunity to join you. That's all it is on any level. And why that should be threatening or scary, I don't know. This goes back to, do you have, do you believe in what you're doing? Do you believe that you offer value for the service or the program that you're putting out there? Do you believe in yourself? It's no harder than saying, come to a party on my house on Friday night, we're having a barbecue, right? You're offering an invitation. Sales is not a dirty word. Get comfortable with it, even enjoy it. I do discovery calls um, when I invite a prospect in to talk to me about their business. Um, I do a discovery call, a 30, I can't remember what I'm, trying, I'm doing now, 30 or 45 minutes, but it's for me to get to know them, they get to know me, I describe the what of what I'm offering to them, I tell them what the price is, and then I sit back and listen. And the only thing I'm doing is I'm inviting them to join me. If they say no, that's absolutely fine. I just walk to the, I'm on to the next potential piece of business. And if they said no, it might be for very valid reasons, or it might be for crummy reasons. But the point is they said no. There's nothing I could say or want to say to hit them over the head to force them to give me a yes. I've issued an invitation, get comfortable. And if that's your mindset, I love discovery calls because I get to learn more about someone else's business. I get to read between the lines and find, find out what their mindset issues are that I could probably help them with. And it's a discovery call and that I'm discovering the ways that I can be assist, of assistance to helping them build their business. And then I can just say, come join me for dinner Friday night, or come join me in my coaching package. It's $1,500 for three months or whatever it is that I'm doing at that point. It's just an invitation. So get into that mindset and you'll find that sales is just an invitation and you'll get comfortable with that. 
Okay, so that's all my Salis, but I need cash. I need money. And so before we get into this, because there there's all of these ways to get more money, I want to start with your own statistics. Do you really need more money? Think about this. Or do you need more clients? Do you need more revenue? Do you need more sources of revenue do you, or revenue streams? Have you really looked at your expenses to see what you could cut? Have you looked at your, your spending tendencies to see where you're out of, out of control? So do that self-analysis first before you willy-nilly willy start saying, I need more money, I need more money, I need cash. So do that for me first before you start to say, I need more money. However, if you do need money to grow your business, let's talk about where you can get it. There's always money out there. Um, it's probably your mindset that's getting in your way. The reason you're afra afraid to invest in yourself is you don't see a constant and growing source of income. That's what keeps us afraid of spending money is that we don't know where the next piece is coming in. Once you dig yourself out of your worker bee and your position to create more money coming in, there are so many money sources. So you need to give yourself permission to get that money if you need it. So sources of money for a small business. Um, your savings. If you, I mean, again, keep in mind the mindset issues we talked about before, which is that some people feel that debt is unacceptable. Uh, digging into savings is unacceptable. If, you're, if your intention, as we talked about, is long-term growth, this is a money in, money out scale. You need to bring some money in to be able to get three times that money back. So digging into your savings for a thousand bucks or 10,000 bucks, because you know that if you do whatever it is you wanna spend it on, we'll get you $30,000 back on the back end that's, that's fine. I mean, that should be a no-brainer. Think about your savings as a source of leverage if you need it. Same with your credit cards. Um, a lot of people do not to be in debt, don't like to be in debt. They don't ever want to be in debt. I'm here to tell you it's, a, it's just a leverage tool when, if used responsibly, allows you to grow with it. I'll never, met, I'll never forget meeting um, the CFO of a business I was working with a million years ago, and he was going into a new bank to refinance his credit, re refinance the debt that they had. And I thought, are you kidding? You should be figuring out how to get out of debt. And I didn't say that out loud, but he was talking about a growth initiative that they had that was going to take more cash than they had on hand, and they needed to open up some opportunity to get there. He was fully confident in where that growth opportunity was going to take them, and he had no problem finding a bank that would give them more credit. And that just opened my mind. I thought, that is strategically brilliant, and that would never have occurred to me. So I'm, I'm posing to you that if you have open lines of credit, either a credit card or a line of credit with a bank, think about tapping into it strategically. Another thing to know about is that Credit cards are not the only way to go. If you're in business, you can open up a line of credit with a bus small business friendly bank. So what that means is you will go in and present your, your profit and loss and get, tell them what your growth plans are and blah, blah, blah. And they will grant you an open line, line of credit to $10,000, $50,000, $100,000, whatever it is that you can negotiate for. That means that if you need the money, it's there for you and you'll pay it back at whatever your pre-decided or pre-contractually agreed upon rate of return is. A line of credit can be a lifesaver. Go in to get it before you need it. Go in to get one, to secure one, and you may never use it, but go ahead and do that. You might wanna to go to family and friends. Again, same with hiring family and friends. Be careful because there are other strings attached, but they are there for you if you want them. You can also, you can also go to customers and suppliers. 